On today's show, you're going to meet a singer-songwriter who listens to her heart. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My first guest is Daryl London. She's a singer-songwriter. She's here in the studio to talk about her quick climb to success. Now, before you meet her later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. You'll hear Daryl's. In the second half of the show, we'll be talking about pause for the cause. So stay with us. Daryl London, it is so nice to have you here today. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Now. Before we get started, I just want to compliment you on your music. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm glad. Now, it's been described as whimsical, gentle, sweet, um, and it's also very playful. Yeah, I, I try to have fun with songwriting. I think it should be fun. And um, when I was first starting out writing, it was all very dramatic and melancholy. Um, and then I just kind of reached a point where I, I think I got some more perspective on relationships and the things that inspired me and I now kind of prefer to point out sort of the humor in them and the humor in awkward dating moments and I, I just like to have fun with songwriting and um, same for when we were recording the record too. I wanted it to sound playful and to kind of sound like People were just in a studio with a bunch of different instruments and toys, and um, and you know, see what we come up with. So, when I listen to your music, it it stays in my head for a while after. So I love it. Oh, uh, good. Find myself humming to it. Now, you, it's important to you to listen to your heart. And at one point, you uh, were accepted to law school. Yes. Uh, and you chose not to go down that route. Something was in your heart. What was that? Well, I, I played music in high school and started songwriting in high school and I would play at cafes and restaurants and then I went to Western for media studies and music kind of took a back burner for those four years and I love learning and I love school um, so that was fine but it was frustrating at times that I, I wasn't writing because that's you know my greatest passion and so um, yeah, I, I, I had these sort of two options. After school, I wrote the LSAT and um, applied to law school and toured all the schools. And I, I thought at the time that I was considering it seriously. But as soon as I got the call that I had been accepted, I, I wasn't excited at all. Um, and it was kind of in that moment that I knew that that was not for me at this time anyways and that um, I just need to pursue music with everything I have and see what happens. And you've had quite a successful career very very early on. I oh mean, thank you. You've achieved what many singer-songwriters strive to and, and, and many don't get there. Right. What was that one thing that was that that thing that happened that really, really sort of shot you to the moon with your music? Well, I've been doing this for about five years. And the first couple of years were definitely very grassroots, playing open mics every night and, you know, selling my first CD just out of off stage and out of the back of my car. Um, I'd say the biggest thing that sort of sparked a different trajectory was working with Perez Hilton. Um, the celebrity in, blogger. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, in 2010, I put out three singles through his imprint record label. Oh. And um, he has been very supportive of me ever since we met two years ago and um, still continues to blog about my music and he premiered my new music video last month so he has been a great supporter and I'm so appreciative because he has a huge platform and that has really helped me and it has led to a number of other things so yeah that was big for me. What do you think it is about your music that resonates and has so quickly resonated with 
many people out there who, and many of your fans. What do you think it is that, that resonates? I'm not sure. You know, we're, this is a music business and we're supposed to think in terms of a target demographic. And mine, in terms of who responds most to my music, would definitely be young, high school and college aged women. But and, and I assume that that's because th m their experiences are kind of being reflected back to them in song, right. which is great. But I also get surprised all the time by who comes out to my shows and who reaches out to me. Um, someone recently posted on my website that they're a heavy metal fan, but that they love my new record. So, so I'm, I'm not sure. I think, um, I think, like you said, it, it is playful, and it's a lo most of the record is kind of uplifting and happy. And uh, I mean, who doesn't want to feel happy? So maybe it's something to do with sort of the sonic mood of the record. I'm not sure. Where do you draw your inspiration for your your music? Virtually all of my songs are autobiographical. I write best when I'm emotionally moved in some way by something that's happening in my life. Um, so it, it's a lot of real life and like I said on this record it's um, it's relationships, it's the good, the bad, the awkward. Um, and when you're fine and when you're not fine. But yeah, it's uh, you know a lot of the yeah. songs I wrote um, or at least started writing in my car on the way home from late night shows and you just kind of have that adrenaline going from the show and um, if I'm, you know, I, I travel alone a lot, so a lot of time to think and uh, yeah, that's when I, I got a lot of my creative inspiration this time around. And what has the, um, the, the industry been like uh, for you here in, in Canada? Has it, been, has it been friendly? Has it been a mm -hmm. challenge for you? Yeah, sometimes people ask me, you know, if this is really what you want to do, why aren't you going to New York or LA to pursue it? And I, I really feel like um, Canada has an amazing music scene right now, and it's a very exciting time. And there is a lot of support in Canada, um, things like CBC and CanCon and grants, that I've really tried to make use of all of those things. Um, and yeah, I, I find it a very supportive and, and nurturing environment. Um, so that's why I've chosen to, you know, pursue it from here. Um, but I've, there's also been certain scenes in the states that are, are supportive as well. Like I play a lot of American camp, uh, college shows. Like that circuit has been very supportive for me. So I'm kind of all over the place. But Canada is definitely the home base. And you, you got a lot of support from Sarah McLaughlin as well. Right. Well, I um, I applied to uh, uh, the Lilith Fair talent competition. Right. So um, it was uh, fans were voting for all of the contestants, and then there was a top twenty that the fans had voted, and then Sarah McLaughlin and her team picked the winner. So I got the call um, that I had been chosen for that, which was so exciting. That's still playing Lilith Fair was still one of my favorite experiences of all time. Did you think, oh my god, uh, this is exciting, or did you think, oh my god, I can't believe it's me, or what, what really went through your mind? I was just so excited because um, Lilith Fair was my first concert that I ever attended when I was 12 years old, and my family took me, and um, it was very in inspiring experience, and when I heard that the festival was coming back, I was already so excited about it. Um, I was going to be going regardless because it was just, you know, it was going to be such a great show. So to actually be a part of it this time around was completely surreal. And performing was completely surreal. Um, I was lucky enough, I was working with Chantal Kraviatsik writing at that time and so she came on um, to the small stage and sang with me and then she surprised me by inviting me up onto the big stage to sing with her and Sarah McLaughlin and Melissa McClellan so th that moment when I was on the big stage you know feet from Sarah McLaughlin and Chantel and looking out at the huge crowd at Lilith Fair that was very emotional for me now, Daryl, we're just going to take a quick break, uh, and before we do, it means it's my good-to-know minute, and I know you've got a great success tip, so jump right in there. Okay. Um, 
From my personal experience, I would say as a success tip to just not be deterred by um, an opportunity or a potential opportunity that seems like a long shot. Um, I am a big believer in sending my music to anyone and everyone who might like it, even if the odds are really slim. And uh, that, has, that sort of approach has served me well. And um, opportunities lead to other opportunities, so that would be my advice. Well, that's good to know, and thank you for that. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Daryl London, singer-songwriter. Let's stay where you are. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner. Welcome back to the show. I am speaking with singer-songwriter Daryl London. Um, now, Daryl, you, uh, at a very young age, um, have created success. Was there ever a time that you doubted yourself when you sat down at the piano and you said, oh my God, I don't think I can do this, I'm blocked? I would say there have been many moments like mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, like I said, I had that sort of crossroads between law school and music five years ago, and a lot of people, I think, have had trouble with, um, you know, understanding my choice at times because it's a grind, you know, being an independent artist. And I'd say the hardest times have been when you're you're playing a show, like say a college show, and no one's listening and everyone's drunk and rowdy, or or things like that. When you feel like you're not making the connection and I, there have definitely been times when I'm wondering why am I doing this but for me it's been all about just harnessing those other moments like the Lilith Fair moment or you know just when you're having a show and, and people are listening and connecting and they come up and talk to you after and um, to me it's all about that and it is a grind, but those moments are so beyond rewarding that um, it's, it's been worth it. Now you have a new album out called Eat a Peach. Yes. Let's talk about that. Okay. What's the album about? About the record? Yeah, what, what's it about? Um, the name of the record? Yeah, oh, where'd okay. you, yeah, where'd you come up with the, with the concept? In your mind. Yeah. Um, the underlying theme mm -hmm. of your album, okay. of the music. So uh, naming this album was very hard for me. I don't know why, but it was harder than writing any of the songs. Um, and I was really struggling with it for a few months. And I started thinking about other records that have been named after colors. And I asked myself, what color would this record be? And the only one that I could fit to it was Peach. And then that reminded me of a line from my favorite T.S. Eliot poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. The line is, do I dare to eat a peach? And it's about this man who's looking back on his life with regret because he never took a chance and he never was his true self or you know, put a part of himself out there. Um, and that is kind of what this record is for me. It's just me trying to be my authentic self and put a piece of me out there and uh, see what happens. So that is where the name Eat a Peach came from. Would you consider yourself daring? No. I don't think there's really anything daring about what I do. It's just kind of what I feel like I need to do right now to be happy. You know, it's. And like I said, when I was making the law school choice, in that moment, I thought, you know, I'm so torn, I have this big decision to make. But looking back, you know, law school didn't really stand a chance. Um, I, I think I knew inside what I needed to be doing, and um, it, it's almost like it's not a choice for me. It's just what makes me happy, so that's why I do it. And for you, Daryl, how would you define success? What does it mean to you, or what would it look like? What does success actually look like? As a musician, I would categorize success as being able to do your craft full time and sustainably, and um, to connect with people through music, and basically, yeah, just to tour and 
you know, be supportive or but supported by fans and 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 have that relationship with them and just do what you love. That's success to me. If there was one super famous singer songwriter out there in the world that you could meet tomorrow, who would it be? Oh gosh, maybe Carol King. Why Carol King? That's an interesting choice. Well, she's just so good at her craft. Yeah. You know, that's what I've always been drawn to in um, in in music is people who are great at their craft and so I, I like singer songwriters like Ben Folds and um, Joel Plaskett and just people who are good songwriters and you know maybe talk songwriting with them I'd like that. Now um, your your album then Eat a Peach where can people find it? It is um, being distributed by EMI Canada okay. so uh, it's you know pretty much everywhere it's on iTunes Amazon and in stores right now so across Canada so um, yeah so pretty easy to to get a hold of and congratulations to you on that thank you now if anybody wants information about upcoming shows where they can come out and see you they can visit your website yes my website is updated regularly okay. and I will be on the road a lot in the coming months and we're posting new shows all the time and also Facebook is a great way to stay in touch because I'm posting things every day and um, that's a good way to get a hold of me also if people have questions so Daryl London, I have really enjoyed uh, this time with you and I wish you all the best and, and the best of success with Thank Eat a you. Peach. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll be following your, uh, your journey. Okay. Well, for more information about Daryl London, uh, you can also visit my website at extraordinarywomentv.com. You'll see this interview with her there uh, as well as her bio and some other information. Of course, you'll find other information about uh, past guests and more about the show and more about me there as well. In the second half of the show coming up, we're going to be talking about Pause for the Cause, helping our four-legged furry friends. So stay where you are.